you need to be cautious about how much you trust the CA-125 blood test. In this video, I'm sharing with you when the CA-125 blood test is useful, when it's not accurate, and when it's downright dangerous. If you're an ovarian cancer survivor, or if you've had symptoms of ovarian cancer or a family history, then you've probably had a CA-125 blood level drawn. CA-125 is a protein marker in our blood. We all have it, which actually leads to the major problems with this blood test. But more on that in just a few. When considering the CA-125 blood test, it's true that the higher the level, the more concerning. A normal CA-125 level is less than 35 or 20, depending on the lab. When I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, my CA-125 level was just over 1900. That is pretty high. It was because I had a very large mass in my abdomen. Now, the CA-125 level alone was not enough to diagnose that tumor as cancerous. I'm gonna tell you why a little later on. The CA-125 level is often used as a screening tool for ovarian cancer, but it was never actually approved by the FDA for this purpose. The FDA has approved the CA-125 blood test for measuring response to treatment in women with a known history of ovarian cancer. But this test is often used off label by many clinicians to screen women for ovarian cancer or to detect a recurrence. When used for screening for ovarian cancer, there are some very clear issues that you need to be aware of when it comes to the CA-125 blood level. The CA-125 blood test can be elevated without ovarian cancer. Other conditions or situations are known to cause an elevation, especially in premenopausal women. Anything that can cause inflammation in the body, things like infection, menstrual periods, pregnancy, smoking. There are a lot of conditions that are completely not related to cancer, but can cause an elevation in your CA-125 level. When a CA-125 level is taken in the general population, we find that only about 3% of women with an elevated level actually have ovarian cancer. This means that 97% of women with an elevated CA-125 are completely cancer-free. That doesn't make this test very useful in screening the general population for ovarian cancer. But the test does become a little bit more useful in women with symptoms that are known to be linked to ovarian cancer. Things like bloating, feeling full, or back pain. But it's only really one part of building a clinical picture around an ovarian cancer diagnosis. You need to request other types of scans and screenings if your CA-125 level is high. I'm gonna share exactly what you need to be asking for at the end of this video. On the other end of things, your CA-125 level can be normal, but you could still have ovarian cancer. The CA-125 level is elevated in about 50% of women who have early stage ovarian cancer and in about 80% of women who have late stage ovarian cancer. That means women, even with advanced stage disease, there's 20% of them that have normal CA-125 levels. An ovarian cancer survivor that I work with in the Cancer Freedom Program was at risk of having an ovarian cancer recurrence. Before she joined the program, she was being monitored regularly through both the CA-125 level, but also a rotating schedule of scans. By using this approach, they were trying to catch a recurrence early if one was gonna happen. The unfortunate part is that she did have a cancer recurrence. But when the ovarian cancer recurrence happened, her CA-125 levels remained normal. There was no change. The recurrence was detected through a routine ultrasound that was set up by her oncologist for her follow-up. Her CA-125 level was useless, but the ultrasound caught the mass. It just goes to show that a CA-125 level on its own is not a predictable way to diagnose ovarian cancer or screen for recurrence. So where does this leave you? With no reliable way to accurately screen for an ovarian cancer recurrence, what do you do? The truth is, is that the best way to detect ovarian cancer is to know the signs and symptoms, detect them early, and seek help fast. Use the symptoms in combination with the CA-125 level and some other scans I'm gonna mention up next. When it comes to ovarian cancer, it's often referred to as the silent killer. But some experts actually disagree with this statement. They say that it's not silent because women do experience symptoms. The major problem is that the symptoms are very vague. These types of symptoms happen in many women and you might never get a definitive diagnosis or worse yet, you may completely be dismissed by your clinician. I agree with the statement that ovarian cancer is a silent killer. 
with a doctorate in cancer care and working with ovarian cancer survivors on a daily basis, I still personally could not pick up on the subtle symptoms of ovarian cancer. It's nearly impossible for women to detect this deadly disease based on the symptoms alone. Obviously, in this specific case of the ovarian cancer survivor I worked with, they use CA125 levels in combination with other scans. So if your CA125 level is elevated, here are the scans and tests that you need to be asking for next. There have been several studies that show the use of a CA125 level in combination with a transvaginal ultrasound is a useful way to detect either an ovarian cancer diagnosis or a recurrence. A transvaginal ultrasound is an internal ultrasound that's performed with a probe in the vagina and it helps to visualize the ovaries and any masses. The transvaginal ultrasound is accurate and effective in detecting masses in the ovaries. It's also much easier to get than a CT, a PET CT, or an MRI because it's considerably less expensive and easier to perform. The transvaginal ultrasound also does not expose you to any unnecessary radiation, unlike the other scans. So with an elevated CA125 levels and symptoms of ovarian cancer, it would be useful to have a transvaginal ultrasound performed to visualize your ovaries. The CA125 blood test is not accurate enough to use on its own, and it's certainly not perfect, but it is one piece of information that might help you and your team to get an accurate diagnosis. Now, if knowing the signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer could possibly save your life, then you need to hear my own personal story of being diagnosed with stage three ovarian cancer. My number one symptom of ovarian cancer, the thing that really pushed me to go to the doctor, well, it's not what you're expecting. More women need to know about this. That's exactly why I'm sharing my number one most shocking symptom of ovarian cancer. I've linked it up in the next video here, so I'll see you in there.